if you were to try and design a lifestyle for someone that would onset their predisposition or lack of neurodegeneration as quickly as possible, what would you prescribe that person? <laughs> If you were like you're some demon from hell and you want to try and make this person's brain uh, degenerate toward some dementia, Parkinsonian style thing, what would what would you get that person to do? Mm. Yeah, they. I would uh, deprive them of sleep. We know sleep is crucially important. Um, sleep is when your brain is actually cleaning itself of proteins that are associated with the condition. So amyloid beta, tau protein, we see increases in cerebrospinal fluid on just one night of shortened sleep. So I would deprive them of sleep. Sleep is really important with regard to brain health. It's re it's, it's important re with regard to mental health, but it's very important with re with regard to how your brain actually functions. Um, so there's that. Chronic stress is a killer. We know that chronically elevated cortisol leads to shrinkage of the hippocampus, which is the most vulnerable structure of the brain. The first stru one of the first structures of the brain to be uh, to be affected by Alzheimer's disease. It's where you know it's the memory processing center of the brain. We know that chronically elevated cortisol, which is wrought by chronically elevated levels of stress, um, is not good from a brain health standpoint. It also creates an inflammatory effect in the body. Um, I would, from a dietary standpoint, I would give a person exclusively ultra processed foods to consume. Um, we know that these kinds of foods not only create inflammation in the body, but they drive adiposity or obesity. We know that they create... Uh, the phenomena of insulin resistance. And we know that insulin resistance is not good from a brain health standpoint. Um, actually, in Alzheimer's disease, you see a reduction in the brain's ability to generate uh, energy from glucose. And in the Alzheimer's affected brain, the that ability is diminished by about 50%. And the brain is a ravenous energy consumer. And so, I mean, that's just like lights out for the brain, right? You can imagine um, how detrimental that might be. Well, we see that the level of glucose metabolism in the Alzheimer's affected brain is actually very strongly correlated with the degree of insulin resistance in the body. So you want to make sure that you're as insulin sensitive as possible. And so one way to do that is by, you know, optimizing for protein in your diet. We're starting to see all this research now come out about the value of, of dietary protein, minimizing your consumption of ultra processed foods, make sure that you're at a healthy weight. And then finally, this kind of, um, funnels into the lifestyle recommendation, which would be if you want to develop dementia as soon as possible, make sure that you are highly sedentary and that you never exercise. The brain thrives atop a body that's, you know, moving and that's exercising. And there's tons of evidence now on this, both as a preventative strategy and also as a way to slow down the progression of neurodegeneration. So making sure that you're that your resistance training, and I mean, I can't underscore that enough. Resistance training is super, super important. We're seeing a correlation now. Andy Galpin is, uh, you know, he's one of these guys who's who's become fairly prominent in our space. Just published a paper looking at whole body strength and cognitive function, and this is just this is one of many papers, right, that has come out showing us the link between uh, robustness, strength. And it's not even necessarily muscle mass, right? So it's like not we don't all have to look like sebum, right? After all, or you. Um, to, to procure better brains. It's just about being strong in body and resistance training is the best way to, to, to do that and optimizing for protein again. And so, yeah, I mean, right Okay, there. so if, that, if that's the, the, the demon's prescription of what you would do if you wanted to onset it, when it comes to strategies and tactics that people can lean on, um, a, a food type, any supplementation, any other sort of lifestyle interventions, what is there on the, on the sort of positive side? Yeah. So the it's it's very um the the diet dementia recommendations are <clears throat> all the evidence is I don't want to say weak <laughs> but we have the the best sort of idea for what a brain healthful diet might look like is referred to as the mind diet which is the sort of diet that's been cobbled together by an epidemiologist of observational research that combines the some of the attributes of the Mediterranean diet with some of the attributes of the DASH diet, which is the dietary approach to stop hypertension. Because again, hypertension is one of these important modifiable risk factors. Hypertension is high blood pressure. So it's the Mediterranean diet combined with the DASH diet with a sprinkling of you know foods that we've found specifically play a brain beneficial role. For example, blueberries, right? The mind diet only recommends 
Uh, in terms of fruit, the only fruit that the Mind Diet recommends makes a recommendation for are blueberries, right? Pretty dialed as a fruit. I know that we want more, but it's blueberries are el- blueberries, pineapples, bananas, triple A rated fruits. Yeah, for me, no blueberries are great, but I think that's where the limitations of that kind of like dietary recommendation comes in because avocados are a fruit, and if I had to, if I had to pick a fruit that I thought was potentially most beneficial to the brain. I think avocados are actually probably the most beneficial fruit to the brain because they have the highest proportion of fat protecting, specifically fat protecting antioxidants of any fruit or vegetable, which is of particular relevance to the brain because the brain is made of fat and not just any type of fat, but the brain is comprised primarily of polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are especially damage prone. They're the most chemically unstable of fatty acids. You have your polyunsaturated fatty acids, your monounsaturated fatty acids, and your saturated fatty acids, saturated fatty acids being the most chemically stable, but your brain is comprised primarily of polyunsaturated fats, DHA fat, docosahexaenoic acid, and arachidonic acid. Um, And so we need to protect these fats, right? The brain is a crucible for oxidative stress because it's metabolizing 25% of every breath you take in a container the size of a grapefruit. So it makes up two to 3% of your body's mass, yet accounts for 25% of your body's oxygen metabolism. So again, crucible for oxidative stress. What can help protect the brain under those circumstances? Antioxidants. And so fat protecting antioxidants, really important. I think avocados are, again, one of the best brain foods that you can consume. They're also rich in compounds like lutein and zeaxanthin, which we know are really supportive of cognitive function, wonderful source of potassium, which we know is uh, really important for cardiovascular health. So, you know, the MIND diet is a great starting place. But there was just a randomized control trial that put the mind diet, compared the the, the mind diet in a at risk population, I believe, um, and found no benefit over just a calorie deficit in an older adult population. So, you see what I'm saying? So, nutrition science is incredibly weak, and that's where you have to you can't be you can't be prone to scientism, which is like this you know, adherence to scientific data as if it is religious doctrine. That's just not not how it works, right? Like nutrition science is harder to study than drug than drugs, and yet it's much less well-funded. So a whole foods diet is my prescription. It's a diet that incorporates both animal products. I think grass-fed, grass-finished red meat is a brain health superfood, along with avocados and dark leafy greens and um, shellfish, I think are incredible. Um, legumes, I think, are incredible, but yeah, I, I think omnivory one hundred percent, and avoiding the ultra processed food as be- uh, processed foods as best as best you can. Foods with refined grains, foods with added sugar, foods with refined bleach and deodorized seed oils. I think that's the the way to go. I noticed that at no point in this preventable neurodegeneration conversation have you mentioned doing sudoku yeah or or brain training yeah or uh a crossword puzzles or, or or anything like that is there a is this just so low down on the the sprinkling on the cake and everything else is the foundation or is there something in the brain training wise no it's a that's a good question i think um keeping keeping active and staying socially engaged and doing things that require that draw on a complex array of cognitive processes, I think that's very helpful. And there is evidence that that can help build what's called the cognitive reserve, which is super important. So the cognitive reserve basically stipulates that the more you have to lose, the better off you're going to be. It's a form of cognitive resilience that you're building. Mm. Um, Sudoku, things that are like really kind of more like on the simplistic side, like crossword puzzles and Sudoku. Speak for yourself, man. I can't do Sudoku. (laughs) Same, yeah. I mean, I don't remember the last time I've even attempted, but... um, it's essentially like be- they're better than nothing, right? Better than nothing, but uh, but they're too simplistic to really have what's sometimes referred to as a spillover effect where they can actually improve other cognitive domains. Whereas engaging more in real life is actually the best way to, to, to build that cognitive reserve, like engaging in real life, learning a new instrument, perhaps learning a, a language, learning a new skill. Those are all super important because they're more complex than just sitting down and, you know, playing a numbers game. Yeah, I uh, I had Roy Baumeister uh, and Robin Dunbar on the show uh, within the last year, and Dunbar was talking about how the most computationally difficult thing 
that humans have to do is tracking the social intricacies of all of their friend groups, mm. right? I know Max and I know John and I know that Max and John used to be friends, but they're not anymore. And the reason because of that is because of Fred uh, and Fred is friends with Dan, but Dan and Max, they don't get on because of this thing from before. Like his argument is that although we look at the brain and we use the brain largely for this sort of beautiful cerebral consider the nature of the universe man am i really enacting my logos forward like all of that stuff but what it was there for was to track between 50 and 150 intersecting hierarchy based relationships yeah and you know from a computational perspective i think again that's one of the reasons why relationships are it's like the 10 minute walk right it's not just the walk it's not just the insulin it's the, the, the outside being a single biggest determinant of how long you're going to live is the quality of your, your relationships. It's more than smoking. It's more than diet. It's more than your weight, you know? And if you can manage to use, uh, hopefully not a drama-ridden set of friendships, but if you can use all of the different friendships that you have as a push, as a, 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 a that is part of your um, cognitive horsepower uh, backup, I think that that's a really good way to do it. 100%. Yeah. Loneliness is a toxin on par with with alcohol, alcoholism these days um, is what this what we're starting to see. Um, and that, I think you referenced to Harvard, the Harvard study. It's like Correct. the longest running study on human happiness. 80 years, longitudinal. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's crucially important. This is something that I struggle with. I live in Los Angeles, which is a city that can at times feel very alienating and, and isolating, but I'm very grateful that I have a- Come great, to Austin, baby. Yeah, I Telling know. You. I'm thinking about it. But I, ha I do have a, I have a friend, a great friend group, um, which you're obviously, of course, a part of, but I also have like my family close and I feel super lucky and my heart goes out to people who, who don't have that. But yeah, loneliness is, and loneliness is not being alone. That's, I think it's important to make that decision. It's, it's good to make friends with your mind to the point that you can actually be comfortably alone. Yeah. But, um, but if you're not happy about it, you know, if you, if, uh, you feel like your social life is lacking, it's definitely some story there. that you tell yourself again, right? There you go. You yeah. know, like we said about, about the food, it's not just the food that you eat. It's not just the relationships you have. It's the story that you tell yourself. What does it mean that this yeah. is the case? We'll get back to talking to Max in one minute, but first I need to tell you about Element. Thank you. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of sodium, potassium, and magnesium with no junk, no coloring, no artificial ingredients, or any other BS. It's how I've started my morning for over three years now, and it helps to regulate my appetite, curb cravings, and optimize my brain health. First thing in the morning, you don't need to have coffee. Your caffeine receptors, the adenosine system, isn't even active for the first 90 minutes of the day, but your adrenal system is, and salt acts on your adrenal system. This orange flavor is the best way that you could start your morning. It's why I continue to go on about it because I use it and I love it for myself. Best of all, there is a no BS, no questions ask refund policy where you can buy it 100% risk-free. And if you do not love it for any reason, they will give you your money back. And you don't even need to return the box. Right now, you can get a free sample pack of all eight flavors with your first box by going to the link in the description below or heading to drinklmnt.com slash modernwisdom. That's drink lmnt.com slash modern wisdom. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that clip with Max, you will love the full length episode, which is right here. Go on, press it. <laughs>